Hey everyone, sorry it's gonna be a little bit shaky. Today's kind of just gonna be a quick and dirty kind of video, I've got stuff to do. But remember I told you I was taking some time off, I took some time off work. I had like a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, today is Saturday. I don't know when you'll see, it might be a week from now, but I'm gonna kind of continue on with what's happening. I'm off all next week and I've got some big plans for some of the projects, but something I gotta take care of right away. Thought I'd take you guys along with me. Let's take a peek. This rack is starting to look a lot better. You can see I've thrown a bunch of different botanicals in there. The water's starting to clear up and stuff. Now, originally I was talking about putting a top on top of this because I see it and it's just messy and I don't really like it. But most of the time when you're doing video, nobody really sees that. So I am debating the idea of either raising the wood up higher, adding another layer to it, and possibly suspending from the ceiling on the clips, same way as I did that one over there same way as I'm going to be doing the one over here as soon as I just paint the wall. This one's ready to go again. But I could suspend a four foot four tube fixture over this tank and maybe suspend it at about the height of the filter. And then it'd make it a lot easier to work with. It'd probably get better for growth. And then once we get the CO2 running in this tank and we get the CO2 going on this tank, it's got a manifold on it that I can run five tanks off of it. So one, two, three, Four, and you know down the road if I need it for something else we could do that and get that real heavy heavy plant growth going not sure if that's the plan or not but that's not really the point of today's video but I just wanted to show you guys that some of these tanks are starting to look they're starting to come together starting to look a lot better we had this shelf that was in the other room that was kind of sitting beside the desk and the shelves and it was all full of books and it was again it was just temporary but it fit perfectly in this spot so what I've been doing so far this, this week in these past three days, besides setting up that rack and doing all those other things, is I'm literally going through absolutely every box of equipment, everything I have. And so I've gone through all these materials and stuff like that, gone through all these different little drawers. And it's, some of it's been like antique roadshows, some of the little tools and accoutrements that we keep on hand for doing some of our different jobs. You know, some of the stuff I find, this is all little different parts and fertilizers and test dinners and things for doing CO2, things for using brakes. And then I have a whole pile of different impellers for different pumps, all sorts of different chemicals and, and products and everything like that. Everything I need, so everything I've gone through there. And then I have this unit here, which I've shown you in my show videos. This is kind of what I take with me when I travel to shows, but it's also got all the different little parts that I always need to have handy spare valves. If I'm showing fish, I got little clamps. I've got all different types of T's and straights and different types of weed valves, little types of gang valves, uh, um, valve checks. So the, the air only goes one way. I use these for weights. These used to be from like a bubble curtain, little pieces of airline hose cut, some zip ties. I even have some old impellers for some old power heads. I got different types of syringes and different things for dealing with different types of issues that may prop up razor blades and things. All the type of things that you want to kind of have to readily at hand should you ever need them. Now, the reason I said that that tank that's right behind me here is the project for today is because it all started here. This is the wall. This is that 12-foot wall. My daughter's little playset kitchen used to be there. It's just over there temporary. It's going to actually be going outside beside her big giant swing set, which you can see through the window out there. Maybe you can't. I don't know. But basically, this space here, I've got to slowly start getting this ready for building the actual aquarium. But before I could do that, I had to move almost everything out of this space, and the tank's one of them, to be able to accommodate the piece of glass that's gonna be being delivered. It's a 12 foot piece of glass, it's 12 by three. No, sorry, that's incorrect. It's gonna be a 12 foot space. The glass is actually, the standard length is 10 foot 10 inches long, and it's gonna be three feet tall, and it's gonna be three quarter inches thick. And it's got to come down this incredibly long staircase. It's got 16 stairs. It's going to come down here. I measured it out. I actually made a frame 12 by 3 using pieces of the T-bar ceiling. Just made a lightweight frame and brought it down the stairs myself. And it can come around the corner. It won't touch these shelves at all, but it'll come around the corner. It was going to touch the shelf that was there that I just told you about in the laundry room. So that's why that had to move. That's why all the books are sitting all over here piled. Everything's being shuffled around. These three tanks are being are, are being sold. Two of them are already sold. So everything's kind of happening really, really quick. 
this tank here is in my is not in my way but i've been wanting to move it for a while to get it kind of out of the way of construction so when i do start doing the construction of other things one of the projects that's happening this week i'm going to need as much space here as i can get so what we're going to do is we're going to drain that tank down we're going to go and clean the filters we're going to take some of the media out of the filters and we're going to go and take that media and we're gonna add it to these aquariums to season and start the cycling, real heavy cycling process by adding inoculating the tanks with lots of the natural nitrifying bacteria all ready to go. That way seasons those tanks so they're ready to use. And then we're gonna drain this tank down, take all the heavy rock out of it, and then we're slowly but surely, we're gonna move it over to that spot right there. There's the plug for it, ready to go. It'll be completely out of the way of almost everything I'm gonna be doing until we actually start the actual physical build of this tank. And by the time we get to the point that we're ready to build that tank, that tank won't even be here anymore. It'll be gone because we're just using it as a quarantine tank. But if you remember, right down there on the corner on the floor, there's the 20 long. That's the quarantine tank for future projects down the road. Now, when you're working on a tank that's far away from your water source and everything like that, you can haul buckets or anything. But I absolutely love my old school python. Basically, I have like a 15 foot hose. Goes all the way into my laundry room sink. Using, uh, I don't even have the python. Oh, I still do. Yeah, I do. You know, the python drain and fill thing. But uh, basically, it's a waterbed drain and fill kit. If you're not old enough to know what a waterbed is. Giggity, giggity, giggity. <laughs> I don't even know if they make them anymore. But a couple of quick connectors. And then I just turn the water on. Water runs cold. Runs straight down. It just creates a vacuum and sucks the water down the hose. And then go out there and uh, do a nice cleanup on the tank. So you can see what I drained it down to, you know, 70 gallon tank. That's probably, you know, it's probably about 200 pounds all said and done. And the floor is nice and smooth. And I slowly just dragged the entire stand and wiggled it all the way until I got into that spot. Now, the other factor is the fact that when I set it up here, aquariums can really do damage to a carpet. So that, you see, I put down a rug and that took the real, the, 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 the rug itself is the same. It was left over from the carpet, but I put the rug down there and that took the abuse but over here, I put it straight on the floor. And the reason I put it straight on the floor is because I'm not too, too worried about it because literally the carpet from that corner is going to be cut out all the way to here and join up with the wall there. And that's where the new stand for the fish tank is going to be. So I wasn't really too worried about it. Next step is just get that tank up and running. So we got to drain bring water all the way from the RO tank all the way to here. And while that's happening, we're going to clean out those two canister filters and we're going to take some of that seasoned media, not too much, and add some of that stuff into those into those tanks there and get them going. So we got the water running again, straight RO water. We'll just have to buffer it to make sure it's stable. Got the heater in place. We've got the filters in place, well, at least the, the intakes and stuff. Filters still got to be cleaned. We got the power bar in place and we got the lights on the timer ready to go. So the stuff that comes out of these things, all that muck and gunk and everything like that, you know, it's, it's dirt. But this is ultimate stuff to be able to water your house plants with. But it's also, once we clean these off, to get a little bit of that, a little bit of that sludge, a little bit of that nitrifying bacteria into those systems, into those new tanks, there's no better way to start cycling an aquarium than using that. For cleaning your media, for you, for most people, unless they're like me who live out in the country, I can use water mains water because it comes from a well, so I have no chlorine whatsoever. And the difference in the water chemistry, pH, and so forth is going to be insignificant for my purposes of basically rinsing the media. However, if you live in a city and you have to know whether or not you have chlorine or chloramine, both of those are disinfectants that will kill the necessary bacteria, which is the products that we want to maintain and maintain the integrity that we need to be able to establish a healthy biological aquarium. So basically me rinsing these out, you can see I've rinsed them once. They're all nice and clean now, ready to go, ready to go. I've just got to go and clean these other ones out and remove some of this black water sludge out of it and stuff like that. That's the stuff, that's the liquid gold we were just talking about. Now, as I mentioned, if you're in a city where you're in, you have municipal water that uses chlorine or chloramine, you can definitely not rinse it under the tap. Or if you do, if you say it's really bad and you have to rinse something under the tap, rinse only one or two of the medias and don't go and change your whole filter out wholesale. For if you are able to, when you're doing water changes, that dirty water that you've taken out of your aquarium that's in your pail, you can rinse your different medias in that tank water. That tank water, I could also use my reverse osmosis water because I know it's exactly the same as the water chemistry within the aquarium. But for a better, if you're not certain, use your tank water to rinse out your media in a bucket. 
Now to go and put the filter back together, we always want to start, this filter takes water from the tank and pushes it down the side. Go down, you see that corner? It goes down the side. Every one of those has that same nodule on the corner. You always start so the filter water comes from the bottom up and then back out to the tank. So you're going to want to start with your coarsest media first. So one, two, three, four, and then a fine filter just before it goes through the pump. All right, both filters are cleaned. They're all set up. Power's running to everything. They've both been purged of air. I didn't fill it right to the very, very top because there is a slight temperature change in between the water that I use in my storage for my reverse osmosis and these guys. But however, the Gara and the sword tails that are left in his tank, they tolerate temperature swings very, very well. So I cleaned up the rest of the Manubius that's here, put that in there, just let it float around until I can do something else with it. But for all intents and purposes, it's ready to go. It's buffered. Everything's good. That was an awesome job. Now let's go take a peek at the other tanks. And on the other side of the coin, over here, we've gotten all six of these tanks inoculated with perfect living strains of the biologicals that we need from established aquariums. We took a bunch of the clean, nice pieces of Anubius. They're, most of them are just floating in that tank for now. I did throw a few of them and some different bulbitis and different types of low light plants down there, but I don't even have the light set up, but they're gonna be fine. As I said, I'm off for the whole next coming week. That's a project that we can take care of there. So all in all, today was very, very successful. We got one big project taken care of and it happened there. We're not gonna talk about birds and stones because both of those birds are stupid and uh, stones don't go good with fish tanks unless they're nice decorative stones inside there. So with that, my friends, thank you kindly for watching again as always. Until next time, take care.